All right, Anthony Hartwig here with another volleyball season preview. We're talking to Pima Tuning Valley head coach Donna Steinholt. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for having us on. We are so excited for Pima Tuning Valley. We've already seen them on the network uh, once, and uh, we're excited for everything that you have this year. But before we talk about that, I want you to just kind of give us a recap of last year and some of the lessons that you think were learned and what you hope the returning players can bring from last year's experience? Last year, we had a really good team. We had a hard time sometimes living up to our potential and playing at our own level. Um, I'm hoping this year that these girls learn that they have to repeat positive behaviors and keep moving forward with everything that they do. Um, we have seven seniors this year, six are starters. And um, they are returning most of them from last year. And like I said, they've worked really hard together. They know how to um, play the game. They know how to work well together. As long as they can keep the foot on the gas pedal, we're, we're good to go. Now, as we venture on to this year, I want to kind of have a meet the team segment where we talk about your roster and the big names that are going to come down to it and uh, maybe some new names too. Okay. Um, so for our, our big names, we still have May Struna, Autumn Newkirk, Anna Pittman, uh, we have Taryn Tish. Uh, Kendra Wallace is back this year. She was with us one year and then was out with an ACL injury. Now she's back this for her senior year. Uh, we have Miley Corson, who's our main setter. Uh, some of the new girls that we have this year, we have um, McKenna Jordan, who's a sophomore. We have um, Sophia Young, which is a sophomore. They both uh, lettered varsity for me last year. They stepped in at the end of the season and really helped out and did a great job. My uh, starting Libro is Bailey Fogus. She's returning as well. She's a uh, junior this year. Um, we have a, my second setter is Erilyn Lockwood. She's also a junior and the bench is full of juniors. <laughs> um, we have, we're very heavy in the senior and junior group. Um, I have 28 girls total in the program right now. So we have three teams, varsity, uh, JV and freshman. Being so high on upperclassmen, I'm sure you're not struggling in the leadership department. Who have you seen so far in the summer and the first couple of weeks of the season uh, really step up and be the, that vocal leader for your team and, and um, step up in that role? You know, it's kind of hard to pick just one. Um, of course, Kendra Wallace was voted our captain for this season. Uh, her team felt that she was one of the most um, supportive and uh, driving forces behind the team. But I would have to say all my seniors, they do a great job. Um, even the juniors below them, they support each other. They build each other up. They help the underclassmen. We get a lot of younger girls that haven't played before, so they don't even know how to do rotations and stuff. So we're working on getting the bugs worked out of that. And um, it is really, really hard for me to say just one. Yeah, you know, and the other thing that comes with leadership is chemistry, right? We know that volleyball team chemistry is so important. Got to be able to communicate out there on the court and trust each other. What are some things that this program does to to build team chemistry and to make sure that uh, this group is as, as tight knit as possible? Well, we try to spend as much time together off season as we can and do fun things together. Um, like in the summer, we have the opportunity, of, like everybody else does, to go to Cedar Point. And um, I just take a hodgepodge of girls. I don't even take like the starting lineup. I don't even have that figured out at that point. But um, if they're able to go, we take a group of girls. We go to Cedar Point. And we play in the tournaments there so they can see and experience that and get to know each other a little bit better because they're not always the girls standing next to them on the court. Uh, we try to get some beach volleyball going in at one of our players' houses. Her grandfather has a nice beach volleyball pit. And so we try to spend time doing that and, you know, after school, before games, we try to get it set up so they can have dinners together and they get a chance to know each other a little bit more personally. Let's talk about the schedule. We'll start inside the conference that you play in, which is a very tough one. Um, what kind of things do you expect out of the conference this year? And, and how do you think that uh, the Lakers can really make some noise in it as well? Well, this year's conference is going to be a little bit different. We've had quite a few coaching changes within our conference and um, so it's going to be interesting to see how the different teams uh, line up and everything. Uh, I I agree. We have a pretty good conference. They're pretty tough every school we play. Um, I just think if my girls are on fire, if they're on their game, that 
nothing can stop them and they can be successful in everything that they do. And then in the non-conference, these are the games that you play pretty much to get ready mm-hmm. for conference play and to get ready for tournament time. Who are some teams that, that pop up non-conference wise that you're really excited to test your team against and, and to play uh, outside of your conference? Oh, that's your teams like Edgewood and Lakeside and Champion. They all have very experienced coaches. Um, their coaches all tr- uh, coach with travel teams too. And it's really nice to see the differences that they bring to the floor. And it gives the girls um, a lot more to look at and learn from. Now, normally this early in a season preview, we wouldn't ask about tournament time because that's a long way off. But tournaments look different in every sport not named football. There's a lot more divisions now. So I'm just kind of wondering your thoughts on how that expansion helps Pie Valley and what doors you think it might open. Um. That's that's kind of a rough question with uh, everything we've had, cha- all the changes we've had. Um, tournaments are a whole different ball game. I mean, you either go in with the mindset we're going on, or you go in with the mindset we're going to get beat, and you, it's just how you approach the whole thing. You have to go in with that fire that you're going to move on and just play at your highest level. Do you think the sport need an expansion? I mean, when this conversation started to happen, where volleyball and other sports we're going to move to more divisions were you a fan of that do you think that sport needed it um i mean we do have a lot of girls that play volleyball we have lots of teams we have things it's, it's hard when you break it down too far you might not get the experience and the um level of play that you're looking for but um i mean it's a trial and error thing right if, if it's not working out they're going to decide that they want to change things back. It's just take one day at a time and that's how we go about it. And um, I just want these girls to work as hard, no matter if we're in a smaller group or if we're in a larger group. This is our first chance getting to talk to you. So I just want to know kind of from your perspective, what do you love so much about coaching for Palm Tuning Valley and coaching for this community and being able to represent the Lakers every night that you go out there and lead your team? Well, it's a very unique experience for me because I graduated from Pima Tuning Valley myself. I played volleyball on the same floor. Um, I fell in love with the sport at a very young age, and I just truly enjoy helping these girls learn and love the sport. And um, it's just, this is, this is my hometown. This is my community. This is where I want to be. And it's just a blessing for me to be able to be here and teach these girls and coach them up here in this beautiful area and this beautiful school we don't let these coaches corners go without giving the coach the chance to highlight their staff we know that you're coming on for the interview you get the limelight uh, but your staff and the people that are working with this program you know you couldn't do it without them so i want to give you the chance to to thank them and to shout them out and to t- talk about the people you have working with you absolutely so just at my base at the lower levels here with me, I have uh, Isabella Greenwald. She is my new JV coach this year. I stole her from Badger. She was Badger's head, head coach for a few years. Um, it's great to have that head coach mindset with you, another pair of eyes that knows how to run a program. Um, my daughter, Courtney Chenault, is helping with freshmen and stuff. She's helped me for the last three years. She's a senior at YSU, but she gets up here and helps us as much as she can. Um And then we step up into our administration. We have our athletic director, uh, Melody Nowakowski. She is phenomenal. She's always there to back us up. And then we, of course, have our principal and our superintendent, um, our board. We know we couldn't do it without the support of everybody and the athletic boosters and the parents. Since It's just it's a whole community. It's a whole family. And we all work together to make a program work here. Coach, we want to thank you for your time. We appreciate you coming on, previewing Pima Tuning Valley Volleyball. We're excited for it. We know you guys are too. Wish you the best of luck this season. We'll be out there covering you guys, and we can't wait to see you again real soon. All right. Well, thank you so much. You have a great day.